Good morning, everyone. My greetings to all our higher education faculty members in Region 10, all those uh, from other regions who are with us today, and we are still live via our Facebook page of the Commission on Higher Education Region 10. Good morning also to our technical working group members, the members of our consortium for flexible learning in Region 10, and of course, our resource speakers for today. Um, I will introduce them formally later. So good morning, Maayong Buntag sa Tanan, uh, Region 10. Uh, currently, we are um, live on Facebook. Uh, we have around 270 uh, viewers in our Facebook page and they are coming in. I know some are still setting up their laptops and uh, having problems with their uh, internet connection, but I hope they can join us uh, uh, soon. Okay, uh, for today and tomorrow, we have um, a whole day um, uh, webinar or lectures with demonstration. There are there are changes in our schedule. I'll present that later. But anyway, I will remind the participants to please register for this morning uh, webinar lecture with our speaker and a demonstration later. Uh, the link is uh, flashed on your screen and also found in the live video streaming. There is a, a form there that you can click. Uh, remember that certificates of attendance will only be given to those who will officially or are who are officially registered. And of course, still our LMS is accessible through the link uh, flashed on your screen. All workshop output um, should be uh, uploaded in the LMS. You can still submit your workshop output from day one to day nine. And certificates of completion will be given to those who can upload their workshop output. Uh, reminder that our LMS will be open uh, still uh, even after we finish the 12-day uh, flexible learning training. And our training team will check on and monitor your workshop submissions and they will also respond to your questions and comments posted in the LMS forum section. For those who have um, attended uh, the webinar or have um, watched the webinar already through our Facebook page and our YouTube post, uh, be uh, reminded that Last Friday, our topic uh, was on developing high instructor presence as we move from face-to-face -to, -face to flexible learning. It was uh, clearly presented by Dr. Ariel Clarine last week. But for today and tomorrow, we have a uh, um, whole day uh, lecture with demo. So I'll allow me to share to you the modified schedule for today, tomorrow, and Thursday. So if you see now in your screen, our modified lecture, uh, sorry, schedule for July 27 morning will be um, uh, a lecture uh, done uh, synchronously through our FB page. Uh, it's entitled Understanding Learning Management Systems. And it will be followed later by a lecture demonstration by um, Another speaker whom I will introduce later that is uh, on the topic building the virtual classroom in Moodle and it will be divided into uh, parts. Part 1A will be this morning. Part 1B will be this afternoon. Uh, it will be still synchronous. You can still uh, view it uh, live via our FB page. And uh, another registration will be uh, done in the afternoon. And then tomorrow will be a continuation of the lecture demonstration on building the virtual classroom in Moodle part two and part three. And we will be joined by another resource speaker uh, tomorrow morning and tomorrow afternoon. And on Thursday, that would be our last day, uh, another um, topic will be discussed and demonstrated, the use of G Suite for education. That's on Thursday morning. And of course, please, please don't forget that we will have our closing program on Thursday afternoon, 2 to 4 p.m. Uh, it will be done again via our FB page. So you please attend that and register as we give the registration link. Okay, that is for today. Okay, I'll stop share first. Then we move on to our 
topic for today. Again, our topic for today, uh, the first part would be understanding learning management systems. And it will be discussed or presented to us by our very able and experienced and um, expert uh, resource speaker. So allow me to introduce our first resource speaker for today. So our first resource speaker is <clears throat> currently the director of MSU Iligan Institute of Technology Center for E-Learning or the MISEL or MISEL. Uh, she is a, she is a, a graduate of Master of Information Technology in Human Computer Interaction, as well as she has a, a Doctor of Philosophy degree, a major in Business Information System, uh, both uh, in Australia. And uh, previously, she is the Regional President of the Philippine Society of Information Technology educators and currently a member of the Philippine Computing Society. Her recent travel grant was um, uh, in National Energy Research Scientific Computing Center at Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory in California, USA. And she has been a consultant for various um, uh, institutions for their information systems. Uh, project management and design of information system for commercial and business, uh, academic systems, and hospital si systems. So she is now a full professor of the Department of Information and Technology and in the College of Computer Studies of MSU, Iligan Institute of Technology. Ladies and gentlemen, our first resource person for this morning, Dr. Seni V. Malabanan. I'm Zen. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, okay. I'll share my screen. Okay. Good. Share. Then. Okay. Then. Okay. Voila. Okay. Okay. Yes, sharing my screen. Well, that means share. I asanam. Can you see my screen now? Yes, Paul. Okay, I should be on the presentation mode. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Is it there now? Can you see it now? Yes, for Mam Zen. Go ahead. Uh, all right. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning, dear participants. And uh, good morning to all administrators. Good morning to Chad as well, um, our regional director, and our um, Chancellor Dr. Sukarno Tagol of MSU IIT and all other chancellors and presidents of different universities. I also greet the um, members of the TWG on flexible learning. And um, of course, I greet as well the um, participants from all over the Philippines. I, uh, we realize that uh, it is not only on Region 10 that uh, we are having this um, uh, participation of uh, different um, faculty members. So uh, we welcome you all to this um, learning, uh, understanding learning management systems that I am presenting today. Now, uh, for the past um, weeks or the past weeks, we already uh, talked about three or three units in the past. So the first unit was syllabus redesigned for flexible learning modality. And we have three modules. And this was presented by our uh, collaborators in this uh, consortium. So different um, faculty members of uh, universities uh, 
particularly University of Science and Technology of Southern Philippines, and as well as um, from uh, Capital University. Uh, we also have um, aligning assessments to learning outcomes unit as well uh, from USDSP and uh, learning delivery and teaching strategies, which is actually um, the third unit. And the last um, presenter, Dr. Clarine, already um, sort of um, sewn all other uh, units from the first down to his talk, and he already have a, a, an interest introduction to the learning management system and informed us that uh, of course it is where we will uh, be putting our learning resources in the learning management systems so uh, for this session the unit that we are tackling for the next two days or uh, three days will be accessing technology and creating virtual classrooms which is essentially the work of our technology, which is the LMS, and as well as other resources like Google um, Suite. So um, my talk will not be too long, actually, because um, most of this will be um, again introduced or rather um, expounded in the next uh, sessions. So I would like. I, here's my outline I, I want to define here. I will show the definition of what LMS is and why we are uh, having or why we should have LMS for educational institutions. And what are the LMS facilities or what LMS can do? And some examples of LMS platforms and how we use an LMS like Moodle so since we will be talking about Moodle, our, our um, learning management system that uh, we are using for this uh, webinar series and demo will be having the Moodle features. So here is the definition of the learning management system. Simply, it is a software application and its work is to manage and deliver online learning content, content. It also facilitates communication with online community, which is actually the members of the classroom, or these are the peers, and as well as the um, teachers. And uh, it can administer assessments, and we can monitor progress and track records. So this is the value of the learning management system. It is not just like any other system that um, we are talking about. It is something like, um, it's a one whole system that can accommodate other uh, systems or other uh, tools. Okay, so, um, LMS stands for learning, learning to deliver education courses or training programs. Management, it helps you organize these courses, create them, change them, assign them to students and grade them. So management is easy for um, our resources and for all our submissions or assignments that are uh, submitted by our students. So the system, we, we are actually talking that system is software. When you talk about um, computer system, it is a software. So an LMS is a computer program. Now, why do we have LMS? And why do we need to have LMS? If you see the, look at the, um, the graphics. So you have there Google Suite, you have YouTube, and you have there a document. And you have there like a symbol of Zoom or Google Meet. And we have, um, we have another uh, graphic 
the E symbol, which is actually, what is E? What is E? <laughs> it is our, um, our uh, what do you call the E? Oh, because I'm using Chrome. Okay, so LMS allow the organization and integration of resources according to the needs of the learners and teachers. So it is basic that LMS can organize and integrate. Say for example, we have Google Meet. Now Google Meet or Zoom does not necessarily reside in the LMS, but the LMS has the capability to house the link or the URL of the Google Meet. It is putting the information where it can be clicked or the information or the URL can be clicked. Okay, so we have, for example, as well, documents. The documents are, could be a journal, a PDF file, or a document made in Microsoft Word, or a document made in um, Google Docs, or um, we have other um, information resources. Now, the YouTube. YouTube can be actually um, embedded and or the link as well put in the LMS. So everything can be integrated. It can be organized. So it is like a bag, for example, that in the bag you have organizers. Like uh, for women, you have organizers for makeup, for tissues, for as well cutleries. So in the bag, you have everything, but you have packets of um, uh, containers or envelopes that you put in one whole bag. And similarly, it is like in a house, you have um, the house has, of course, you have your sala, you have your kitchen, you have your bedroom. So in different areas of the whole house, you have everything that you will be needing, okay? So that is why the LMS is not only used for uh, conducting classes for um, like um, real time, no. Learning management system is there because it can organize things, it can integrate things. It does not necessarily have to be real time for what we want to do for our students. So just like a classroom, we lock the classroom in the afternoon when we go home, all right? So yun yung traditional sa classroom natin. So yung face-to-face -face meeting in the classroom is only at daytime, but in the evening it is locked. However, the students can study at home at their own pace, at their own time. So similarly, the LMS is not there because we want the uh, faith, or rather the um, virtual interaction with our students on real time. Okay, and uh, why do we have LMS? So there are 10 reasons that uh, we have uh, put in here. So it is cost effective and time saving. For example, um, when we have our students enrolled and they are from different places, they do not have to travel just because they will be going to have a training. And it is making us um, save time and cost because students does not, do not necessarily have to come to the place, to our place. So that is one um, takeaway of having an LMS. Efficient management, I already have mentioned about it. Easy access to information. All the information are there. So if you had been working on our LMS, the Reflex 10 LMS or the Flex Teach, for those of you who would been um, 
um, participating or uh, navigating the learning management system that we provided, you have the information like the talks from the different units are posted in our LMS. So there you have the information at one organized um, system. The personalization, number four, um, there is a setting which can be discussed later on. And um, we um, up to date content, of course, the being a managed system, the uh, faculty or the teacher does not necessarily just put the information in there and do not update it. So the content is um, the content can be modularized, can be increased, can be re, uh, can be uh, uh, other resources can be um, taken, put down, or so it's up to date. No, palaging bago. You have there. Um, these are what makes it um, an advantage. Hindi kumbaga yung mga lumang information is there. Then we also have advanced reporting. In the reporting thing, um, we have analytics and we have information who among our students are accessing the learning management system. Like I browsed the number of participants in our LMS. It's about more than 400 participants. However, we were expecting to have more than 400. Like it is a region and in the region we have about 7,000 faculty members and um, we were hoping that there will be more faculty members who can access our LMS for their own advantage. We have another uh, reason is improved communication. So in this um, LMS, the faculty member or the teacher and students can have communication. They can communicate, they, 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 they are able to, um, the, to exchange information and um, they will be able to um, update whatever there is about their lessons. Of course, you have continuous learning. When you, your um, students are in the LMS or having this LMS, what you intend to do for the class is there. And it's self-paced. So self-paced because the student can choose to um, read notes, download resources, or do, if the requirement is to upload resources, it is on what mode these students have or what um, feelings do they have. It's self-paced. Nah? So um, they choose when they access, but of course there should be um, the uh, teacher's presence in that, that just like what was mentioned by Dr. Clarine in his talk, the teacher's presence is there such that even the student or the learners are having this self-paced uh, facility, there should also be uh, assessments which, need for, which is a need for students to look into so that um, they are able to perform. And we have integrated learning. Of course, it was already mentioned that if resources are on different formats, like um, it is in YouTube, it is in a document file and everything, everything is there integrated, sama sama, okay? Then, um, so commonly, the facilities in a learning management system are basic. The three basic ones are learning resource management, which I already mentioned. It is, of course, organizing 
managing learning resources. Your learning resources are um, sari sare, okay? They are varied. So just like what I mentioned a while ago, I showed you the graphic of YouTube and other, um, other tools. Interaction and communication where you can uh, have a forum and you can do chat and you can do journaling and wiki. Feedback and assessments. So what it does is that um, the teacher can give feedback on the performance on or the submissions of the students. And of course, assessments where quizzes, exams, grades are there. So this will be expounded and uh, a demo will be uh, given to you when you participate in the um, next sessions. Okay, there are different LMS platforms. So if you have heard Blackboard, WebCity, these are LMS platforms that are uh, more expensive than what we have here. Um, in the list are open source um, learning management uh, system platforms. And uh, the top among these is Moodle. All right. Uh, Canvas is there and it's as well an open source. Now, um, to sum it all, open source platforms or open source LMS are not as expensive as these are open source and most of these are free all right okay so why moodle so moodle is a learning platform as designed to provide educators administrators and learners with a simple uh sorry they have okay Sorry. So it's, it's an open source uh, software. Okay. Now Moodle is present in 158 sites and 27 million courses. You see the users are 216 million and enrollments it are, um, it has reached about a billion, 1.118 billion. Now, you can see that Moodle has many users. In fact, in the Philippines, of course, we have the open, UP Open University and other state universities which are using Moodle. Now, these are reg registered Moodle sites which are uh, regularly uh, checked by Moodle.org. So, kumbaga updated yung data dito. Okay? All right. So Moodle has the following main features. It manages learners, meaning if there is a participant, the Moodle features take charge of what the teacher will um, um, do the setting in, in this learning management system. It can deliver and organize content again assess learners and track and report what uh, performance there is among our um, users now why moodle because it is not it is uh, um the the important thing is here tracking and assessing learners these are very important features because for now in this pandemic time, institutions are um, forced, not forced to um, have online facilities. And one of the facilities uh, recommended for higher education is of course having a learning management system. So how shall we monitor the performance of our students and of course the presence of the faculty? With a learning management system like Moodle, the learning analytics and the uh, statistics on when 
the um, faculty members and students report to the class can be uh, seen in um, this uh, tracking and reporting system of the learning management system. So these are the things that are mainly uh, important because, of course, faculty members cannot be seen by the administrators. It is the only way that we can as well evaluate the performance. So for us teachers, we are as well uh, having teachers evaluation ratings. You know? So uh, there is this functionality where um, the performance of the teacher can be tracked. Okay, of course, um, this should be in the uh, implementing rules and regulation of um, the institution, how they may be able to um, look into the performance or rather the presence of the faculty members. And of course, the students, for the students, um, for example, submissions, the teacher can see the submission of the students. So if they submitted late or if they did not submit, the report is there in Moodle, okay? It can be shown. It is shown depending on how, of course, the teacher has set the or configured the system, okay? So um, again, this will be uh, in the demo. So how does it differ from other um, facilities or tools. For example, uh, the teacher says, I'm doing Facebook for my class. Now, what is there in Facebook which is not present in uh, the elements? Of course, yung socialization sa Facebook, masyadong maingay. No? If you use Facebook for your classes, what happens is that there is a possibility that the students will be getting out of track. Huh? So, mawawala siya dun sa uh, lessons. And the social media is just a support tool. Even other media like, um, say, if you have Google Suite and you, you, you do not say you are online, right? You are not, uh, you cannot, of course, when our students submit just using the facility of Google, for example, or Microsoft Word, and uh, they send it to, through an email. Now, it depends on, on what has been agreed upon by the teacher, especially we are talking about flexibility. Uh, LMS is, of course, very, very advantageous on our part. But for those who do not have LMS, well, um, the, the um, learning of the students or the flexibility of the teachers to um, deliver instruction is still there. Again, as I said, LMS is not everything in flexible learning. It is a tool. It is something that we can make use of to our advantage. And uh, of course, we cannot force institutions because it is, of course, a um, challenging thing for all other institutions to have, uh, for some institutions to have learning management systems. But still, we, we, uh, we have the means. And uh, while it is a general thing that for educational institution, the learning management system is there so that it can um, facilitate the learning of our students, which is our main objective in higher education or in the educational system. Okay, so for the Moodle, we have these roles. Um, the user roles, we can be an administrator if we have this uh, responsibility or a local admin, and of course, a teacher and a, or a student. Now, in, for those who participated and for those who enrolled, 
in the learning management system we call reflex reflex then your role as for the moment is student right you you cannot configure or you cannot uh, administer yet because your role is a student so when we are asked being a student to submit our requirements we are uh, submitting it so that the teacher can see it and the teacher can mark it so the student submits the teacher marks and that is the objective of the role where one is having these roles and there are more roles okay i just put in the basic okay so if you have seen this of course when you participated you have this interface ito yung hitsura ng ating um, model which was customized when when universities make use of the learning management system it is customized up to how the institution or how the university would like to show interface akasisya so meaning pwedeng baguhin anong hitsura lagyan ng kulay and uh, other figures so the basic here is this so you have there the username it could be an email and the password so yung sa iba and for those who just log on or rather would like to join this um our uh, learning management system you have to uh, put in or register okay you have to create new account which will be in a demo in a while okay so in in the inside of the learning management system or we call reflex this is the home page or the teacher's view okay so um we call it reflex so if i click that reflex 10 it will go to the classroom reflex 10 okay so this is the classroom okay reflex 10 is uh, stands for retooling for flexible learning and teaching strategies of region 10 hei faculty now um so this is the facade this is the uh, interface ito yung hitsura ito yung mukha na ginawa namin para sa reflex tech. All right. But different institutions will have a different uh, format. Okay. But we have here the basic and this is our dashboard. Okay. Uh, again, this will be uh, having the demo and you will perform that in our uh, next or rather in the workshop. Okay. So, in the another teacher's view is there the teacher can see the participants now in here the black we we uh, hide the student names of course you do not want these are the participants these are you yung mga narito sa um ating lms so you have there the student number and uh then if i look into the number of participants here if i click that there will be lots of the names here no? so so many pages all right now again we have this task to deliver and organize this is the teacher's view of course hindi ito nakikita ng mga students or the participants right now as as in your in your um role as a student because the teacher will need to configure or put or make some edits that's why here the red one is turn edit if this is now turn edit on naka on siya pero makikita ninyo here in the mark is turn off uh, okay so you have here crosses that makes the teacher able to organize the content okay and if uh, instructions should be made an activity or resources added okay so more on that so what we are talking about organization and management of learning resources it is here in this interface okay this is on the left side is your administration 
and in here in the middle is your classroom which you can uh, configure all right as well as put in the resources now um, the teacher looks into the student's output so this is the task of the teacher to assess the learners remember our our features that it can as well assess the learners so in here basic to the task of a learning management system is for the learners to be assessed of course the teacher will do it how how he will assess or uh, give grades to students and so the teacher can track and report make the reports again we must no? we we deleted the addresses here but uh, you can see there are participants okay so i have here the number of participants checked last uh, night 431 again as i said at the start parang ang problema daw is yung they were not able to receive email okay so that will be demonstrated by miss nenen or our next speaker how you will get to participate now this is the part where the teacher administer uh, this is the course administration part so the teacher does the setting okay so ito yun um but to to get the whole picture of this you need as well to practice navigating and uh there there should be a practice or sample your work how you will do in all this and which will be uh given to you step by step okay the communication tools there's forum forums chat wiki and you can see here um there are those who are chatting talking what what uh information is there right so um this this window was taken from our own learning environment or our own um msuiit online learning environment so this is where my center is we we give some information okay so now let's go from teacher's role to student now in the upper right corner of the lm of this uh, moodle you have there this information switch role to so when this is clicked the the um teacher will go to the role of the student so in we can see that this is where or how your participation is uh, configured so we can see na uh, nandito yung mga resources okay this is the um, version that we have for unit one and this was on day one so you see nandito lahat yung resources what you have there so instead of of course you have facebook right and you also have YouTube. You can see the resources when you click on Reflex 10 or Ched 10. You can see the resources. Parang kumbaga, pumasok siya on the date, this date. And Ched have another update. Pumasok na naman yung information about Ched. Now, if you look at the other uh, presentations, these presentations, other units, dun sa Ched um, website or the Facebook, what happens there is, matatabunan 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 yung mga resources whereas when you have the learning management system all those that were presented all those that were recorded are put in the learning management system kaya nandito siya kung ano yung nakita ninyo sa um, facebook it is here okay ang iba which are you cannot see in the in facebook kasi sa facebook you have their um, the video Pero yung ibang materials like uh, PDF file is here. Then eventually you can download these resources. 
right? Because we have uh, this understanding among the um, consortium members that these are to be available to our faculty members. Okay, now what can the student do? Students can view and download resources, submit an assignment, answer a quiz or activity, participate in forums, and view grades and track progress. Of course, can manage calendar. Now, this is essentially what you or those who went or who got into the LMS um, does, okay? Merong nag-submit ng assignment, of course, nag-download the resources. Strictly speaking, if we have a quiz, which will come out later, you will need to answer the quiz. And of course, we will ask you to also greet or say hi to your uh, classmates. So you participate in forums. Okay, then view grades and track progress. Okay. Now, I am almost done with my talk, but um, I would like to share to you our foresight as members of the TWG, or Technical Working Group of Flexible Learning, the, our consortium, we have this foresight of having a training academy for teachers of Region 10. Now, we are looking into four data centers that can be distributed in different areas from, we call it, um, uh, ridge to reef because the area of region 10 the northern mindanao area we cross the sea when we go to the part that part of tangob ozamis okay from kulambugan we go to the other part of the island otherwise we talk uh, uh, we we take a longer route so one of that may be in tangob okay then a data center maybe that will cover the Lanao area. This may be in uh, the area of Lanao, the Norte. Okay. And another area for Cagayan de Oro or um, Misamis Oriental. And another area for uh, another data center for Bukidnon. So we are looking into having four servers that can be linked or can be uh, configured having similar thing like this. So the HEIs here are those regions or rather uh, institutions that are in the different provinces. Now, um, so, um, it's not a problem with state universities and big universities, but we have, we are looking at small schools or small universities which may not be able to have LMS. It is a dream. We are having this dream for the consortium of having a training academy where the resources can be stored or can be in these um, data centers that can be distributed and shared among the other schools. So literally, right now, we have the server that we are accessing. It is based in MSU IIT. And uh, we thank our administration for allowing us to have this access for putting a machine or a server for, for, for our uh, other schools. Okay, that is our foresight. And hopefully our CHED will, uh, if they grant us our proposal to have four servers, that will really be uh, good and uh, can serve all other institutions in the region. Now I end with this from, the, from an anonymous um, writer, e-learning doesn't just happen, okay? It requires careful planning and implementation, just like what we do. Nowadays, it is really difficult for us to just have remote teaching and learning, be flexible with however we want to be flexible, but without planning, we cannot really um, deliver what our students need. And that is why we have this plan from unit one to unit four to be able to serve our students. And another by Tim Buff, the key to success is to appreciate how people learn, understand the thought processes that go with uh, 
uh, instructional design, what works well, and, and in different uh, ways of achieving goals. Okay, with that, I thank you so much for your um, listening to my talk, and I hope you have learned a few things from this uh, talk. Thank you. Thank you, Doc Seni, for the uh, presentation on the LMS, especially the one that we are using now here in our uh, flexible learning training for faculty. Uh, before we, um, we re I relate to you the questions posted in our FB page, there has been query on my blurry though young slides. Uh, please be reminded that uh, in some of our some of our participants in the blurry because they have clicked the uh, video in their FB. So mudako no, it will be enlarged and then it will be clear. Uh, some of the gadgets might need to set, reset the resolution. Yes. Para mas mudako ang ilang view. No, uh, mm -hmm. may I remind everyone that. Uh, so far, we have no connection issues here from our speaker to Chad. So it might be that the issue on connectivity is on, on your side. So kindly um, make some um, adjustment. Po. Anyway, uh, so uh, let's go to some of the questions. Doc Seni, if you don't mind, uh, there's yes, a, one question here. Uh, mm -hmm. Can we use LMS for the assessment of students who are having OJT or on-the-job training, especially in the field of accountancy? Okay. Yeah, in, in a way, um, the assessment could be designed by the faculty. How the learning outcome that, uh, that you prepared or the, the faculty, those we trained, Na, yung mga kasali dito sa training is how you would be able to um, assess the learning outcome. Yes, you can because the um, if there will be a participant um, that can be enrolled in this OJT. So if you have the OJT um, classroom, okay, we put a classroom and you have the OJTs there. So the OJT coordinator is the teacher of all the OJTs. And all OJTs are uh, the participants or the, the students of this uh, OJT coordinator. So how the assessment will be done will be assessed by the OJT coordinator and the OJT manager or uh, OJT or the uh, boss, the supervisor of the OJT can become a member of this class and uh it could be uh they can be uh the co-teacher he can be assigned as a co-teacher all right so um for ojts the students can submit what is being required by the ojt coordinator so the ojt coordinator can outright check and even communicate with if if the uh, supervisor cannot get into the lms because sometimes there is restriction in the university, ID lang at email ng, ng um, faculty and students ang pwede. So, this, the coordinator can, of course, email. So, there's, there's no problem with that. Thank you, Dr. Sandy. The question was from Mr. Sirio, Sirio Clarida. Uh, so far, we don't have other questions, but I think there's a comment there from Ma Mardilez Quahutor. Uh, she said, very good foresight. Uh, hope Shedrut 10 will help realize this endeavor for the good of all HEIs here in Region 10. I think uh, she's referring to the faculty, um, uh, what was it, Ma'am Zeni, yung in yung, uh, um, uh, Teacher Academy. Teacher Academy, yes. Uh, uh. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and yes. We go hope, ahead, Ma'am Zeni. Yeah. And uh, that, that is our foresight, and that's a dream of Region 10. When we started the TWG uh, meetings, uh, we have this in mind. How, what, what will you end up with this? Because um, for the information of everybody, the LMS that we have, our kumbaga uh, condition for having this and the uh, being housed in IIT because this is a resource of IIT and we cannot uh, have it for so long. It will be up for three months. Okay, so um, 
we ask the permission of our uh, chair of our flexible uh, learning here um, we we have our uh, our our uh, project leader dr tevis and we ask permission of course with the uh, approval of um, dr tangol uh, we are able to use our server so yun yung kinonfigure natin and uh, hoping that uh, chad will also um, fund the servers which we uh, submitted in our proposal. So right now we have not yet uh, uh, heard about that. And uh, that is our uh, dream to have that uh, teacher academy and to have the servers there. So that's it. Okay. Thank you, Ma'am Zendi. Before I let you go to give way to our next speaker, there is a recurring question. It, it has been uh, ask no previous uh, training natin uh, cheating issues on cheating how do we deal with this during exams or quiz which we which the faculty will um, upload in the or we're making making use of our lms mm -mm. now um, the good thing with lms is um, the teacher can set the time okay so when students are in different places the only thing that the student can cheat is by opening his own books or other resources or opening another computer that uh, there is um, sort of the information from a different uh, computer or say a mobile phone while taking the exam. However, if um, the teacher would say the exam will be live, for example, in Zoom, or in Google, then we they they can be um, there. There are different tools like um, the teacher can access what the student because this is integrating other te technologies with the LMS. It's it's a given that students would like to cheat, they can cheat. But if it is timed, you know, orasan, submit this in this. Otherwise. Yun ang problema niya. And there will just be uh, one uh, attempt, for example. So there are other means. Of course, we cannot uh, discount the possibility that the, the students will cheat. So there could be other um, assessment tools, not only the quiz. It could be a project. That much, that's much better because we can still actually um, uh, get into that thing of critical thinking like mga no? yung mga, mga requirements that does not necessarily have the quiz, long quiz or okay, write up. Pwede, diba? So, ganun. Thank you, Ma'am Zeni. Uh, Dr. Ginagsa would like to add on um, um, on the cheating concerns or challenge. No, uh, She said, we may design our assessments to focus on performance-based or the yes. authentic assessment. This yes. means that students are given a situation considering their context. It would then be difficult for students to just Google or download their requirement. Uh, in yeah. LMS, if a test is of objective type, you faculty can consider shuffling the items or shop shuffling the options, shuffling the options within, within the, the item. item yeah yes okay yeah but, thank you um, yes but the yes. faculty needs really uh, creativity in uh, creativity doing on that. the design uh, and it has there's a need to plan really well mm. the, the assessment exactly right? okay. yeah but that's later, that's right yeah mm. Uh, tomorrow, uh, our resource person will discuss on how quizzes can be built up in the LMS. It, uh, it's one of the topics uh, for tomorrow. But for the meantime, mm -hmm. we'd like to thank um, Dr. Zeni for, again, uh, introducing us to the LMS, uh, giving us a very good background. Uh, our next speaker would be uh, presenting to us and at the same time demonstrating to us how to build the virtual classroom in the in the Moodle and it yeah. will be part 1a this morning because part 1b will be this afternoon so part 1a would be how to set up the virtual classroom followed by 
creating a course in the Moodle and how to manage learners in the Moodle. So, thank you again, Ma'am Zeni. I will now introduce... Uh, thank you as well to Dr. Amfi for uh, her support and uh, my partner in the training team as well. <laughs> Thanks, Amfi. Thanks, thank Dr. you so Anfi. much, Ma'am. Thank you, Ma'am okay. Zeni. So, yeah. now okay. at this point, allow me to introduce our resource person who will... Uh, demonstrate to us how to build the virtual classroom in the Moodle. She is a graduate of BS in Engineering Technology Management and Master in Business Management, major in Production Management. Uh, she is a Google Certified Educator, Level 1 and Level 2, and she is affiliated with Google for Educator Group and the leader in Iligan. Uh, she is now a training manager uh, at the Center for E-Learning at the MSU Elegant Institute of Technology. Without further ado, please help me welcome Ms. Nenen S. Borinaga. Ma'am Nenen? Okay, um, thank you very much, Ma'am, um, for that warm uh, introduction. Um, good morning to our fellow educators here in Zoom and to those who are watching also in the live streaming via the chat. Region 10's uh, Facebook page, and also good morning to our colleagues in the MSU IIT, especially to the MISEL team. Okay, so before I go on with my presentation, also allow me to thank the CHED uh, Region 10 and to our dear Chancellor Sokarno Ditango for this opportunity and experience. Okay, so my part now will discuss, uh, will focus on the demonstration of some features, tools, or modules of Moodle that can be used by you as a teacher in your classes. So in this session, you are expected to perform some hands-on activities and also in the following uh, session. So um, earlier, you were also given some reminders to have your laptops and gadgets with you, as well as your syllabus and course modules and other learning materials so you can perform the demo okay but um i'm going to share now my presentation okay okay so okay before i start um allow me to ask some of our viewers to answer okay here um to answer the question about uh, what lms is available in their school so to be able to answer this question uh kindly open a browser and then go to slido.com and then type the code slash y347 okay okay um slido.com and then the code is y347 Okay, so I have here now two answers from the participants, three and counting. Okay, so we have the Google Classroom, we have Moodle, 
Then we also have Edmodo. And then there's a USTEP. Okay. And there is also answered, uh, he's using his own, and there are some who have, uh, do not have existing um, elements in their school. Okay, so as you can see here, most of our participants are using the Google Classroom. Okay, and then, okay, so I guess more of the, partic uh, the participants are using Google Classroom. Okay, so now I'm going to proceed. There's another question here, um, like, okay, so do you have a Reflex LMS account, the one that was uh, presented by Dr. Sani Malabanan? Okay, so uh, we have, okay, and counting. <laughs> Okay, so as we can see here, we have almost half of the participants who do not have the Reflex LMS account. So I guess um, to be able to see or view our resources, you have to create um, our Reflex LMS. And then, uh, and so to be able to get the certificate, you have to perform also the uh, I sub perform and submit the required outputs for this uh, webinar. Okay, so for those who have not uh, created their accounts, so you just have to go to uh, https slash slash flexteach4x.msuiit.edu.ph and then create a new account. Just click this create new account. Again, um, the address is uh, flexteach4x.msuiit.edu.ph. And then uh, you have to create your account by um, providing or filling out the information needed like the username, the password, and then your email address. Uh, please make sure that you're using your email address. I mean, you're um, using your valid email address uh, in creating your account. And then your first name, surname, and then your town and create your account. Just click on create account. Then. After that, you will be prompted with this. So an email should have been sent to your address. For example, I'm using my um, email address. And then just click on continue. After that, 
check your email ad i mean your yeah your email and then try to look for the email which contains uh, the subject flexible teaching and learning environment for region 10 account confirmation coming from um, big brother and then you open that email um, don't forget to confirm your account by clicking the link here okay so after clicking that link Okay, you can now uh, log in using your username and password. Okay, so to have a feel of what you are using, I mean, uh, that you are already in the LMS, uh, let's take a look at some features that mentioned by Mom Sandy a while ago. So most of the features, I mean, the systems are likely to have some of all the following features like it was already mentioned it was already also presented by mom Seni here this is our dashboard i mean the core site and then then you can also have the system that may allow your students to enroll this is the enrollment for the participants you can add your students here by typing the name or the email address oops wait you show the email address and then okay there's also a feature to keep track of your details your progress your test results and then it also has a functional functionality as mentioned by Ma'am Seni, with your students sending out an email to everyone in a particular course. So if you're already enrolled, you will re be receiving some um, emails coming from Big Brother remind you, uh, reminding you of some of your upcoming activities to perform. And then there's also a chat that you and your students can use and also it has a reporting system that you can tap into by generating reports in excel and also a oh it also offers a graphical representation of data for ease of understanding so here this is an example of a report or logs from our mole i mean our reflex model which shows that uh, these are the users who access our LMS uh, during July, uh, last uh, yesterday, and so on. Okay. And then here, there's also a report, I mean, a statistics on the logs of the students who access our um, LMS. See? This one here, the red, uh, the yellow, I mean the orange shows the students' lags. So as you can see, July 18 and 19 has a low number of clicks. So because it's Saturday and Sunday. So this, uh, the students are having their uh, family time. Okay, so here's another one, the activity reports we're in. You can see, when, um, when your uh, resources are being accessed by your students, say, for example, the launching of the CHED on uh, July 13, with, uh, it's a video. So the students, uh, there are around 62 users who access the resource, and it was viewed um, around 86 times. Okay. So there's another feature here for you wherein you can use when creating your, um, building your classroom, the help with content creation, the one with the question mark. Okay, so if you're having a difficulty in creating your, or building your classroom, just click on that and you will be guided. There's a dialog box, then you will be guided in how to do or how to go on with the feature. Okay, and there's a test. Also, you can have the online uh, assessment with automatic checking and result. Uh, this was mentioned also a while ago by Dr. Sen. Okay. So now um, we're going to 
learn how to use Moodle for teaching. So this is a quick, uh, quick demo on setting up a virtual classroom. We're going to create an e-learning course and then manage our learners. Okay, so here, in, in setting up a virtual classroom, um, we're not going to create your course or your classroom inside um, MSU IIT's um, server because um, there's too many of you and it's quite um, um, very uh, time, uh, time consuming in approving your request. So what, you're go what we're going to do now is we're going to create our own um, LMS in, through this website. So again, kindly open your browser and then go to https colon slash slash numio.com. Okay. So I hope um, you're able to access numio.com. And then when you're in this site, you have to supply this one, the URL, say for example, if you're going to create your site, uh, you have to add your, or the name of your LMS. Say for example, in my case, I name my LMS as NEN.LMS. So for you, it's up to you what's gonna be, uh, what are you going to call your LMS. And then your next is you're going to input your email address so that uh, you can confirm your LMS through your uh, email address. And then after that, just click on create site. So I will give you at least um, 30 seconds to type or enter the URL and then your email address and create the site. Okay. Okay, so again, uh, next is you're going to check your email and then look for the email coming from Numio Support. And then after that, just click on it and then you will see that uh, there's a message here. Hello and welcome to numio.com. So your Moodle site is at so you are given the URL of your LMS, and then there's also the, the information logged in, your username, and then your password. Okay, so just click on the site, and then you will be directed to your site. For example, in my case, this is my, this is my, LMS. Okay. Okay, and then you're going to log in using your admin account and your password. Okay, please bear with me that I'm giving you a slow <laughs> instruction so that you can perform your um, task or create your account. 
this session. Okay, so I have here a disclaimer. So please take note that Numio is hosting Moodle for free. So with a free account, uh, you are only limited to register uh, 500 users uh, with 50 courses and on, you only have two gigabyte of storage. And then you can um, upload up to 10 MB file site which you can also, uh, uh, it has also an email support and it will display ads on your site. But if you're going to up for a more uh, no, features, then here you're going to consider or it's, uh, the $600 per year uh, no, plan. Okay, so a reminder so there's a deactivation and deletion period so unused sites hosted in Numio will be automatically disabled after one month without any valid access or only one week if the site is considered empty or no courses have been created or no new users have been added okay so please uh, take note of that that uh, they will, Anumi will disable your courses if you do not have any activities in your account. And so disabled sites will be permanently and irreversibly deleted from their backups three months later. Okay, so now um, I, I assume that you already have your um, LMS account. So you're going to log in your account, say your admin account, and then input your password. And then there. So welcome to your own learning management system. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so now we have created our virtual classroom. And our next task is we're going to create an e-learning course. So let's go to our Numio or our LMS. So let's have a quick tour or a walkthrough of the interface of our LMS. So we have here at the uh, lower, I mean upper left, the dashboard, the site home calendar, private files, and then site uh, content bank, and then the site administration. And then we have here on your right, the admin and um, the dashboard, the profile grades, and so on. So, since your account is an admin, so you can access here the site administration wherein you can create, uh, you can add users, create course, grades, um, add plugins, and so on. Um, please take note that this account is for admin. So uh, you as a teacher will not actually uh, focus on the functionalities of this admin because when your school, I mean your school will um, build or create a server for you, then the IT people will uh, take responsible of this, you know, will be responsible of this site administration here. So you can explore what are the features here and then features and then just familiarize with the uh, features okay okay so now okay 
So now we're going to create, um, as an administrator, we're going to create a course so that uh, we can start building our um, course, our classroom. So from site administration, just click on that and then um, look for courses and add a new course. So if you're going to add a new course, um, just like here in Reflex, you will have this uh, classroom or course in your LMS. Okay, so here, fill out the information like your course full name. Okay, so I have here example. This is just an example. Introduction to computer. And then your course name, say it's IT 100. And then the category. So by default, it's miscellaneous. But then when your administrator um, configure and created some um, category in your school, then the cat um, the miscellaneous here will be uh will I mean the category category course category here will not just be miscellaneous alone. Okay, and then you can um, set the course date. Say for example. The course will start um, July 28th or maybe today. And then you can also set the course or end, end date like December, let's say December 1. And then you can add here the summary of your course. So like uh, the course and Type here the details. Details or the summary. And then you can also add the course image here. Uh, I mean here. So um, if you're going to look at our reflex, okay, let's try to check if there's a course image in our reflex classroom. Here. Okay, so there's none. So if we're going to add a course um, image, say, okay, just look for the file in your computer, upload it. Where's my reflex? Here, the reflex classroom binder, and then upload. And please take note that um, the file size is limited only to 50 MB or 100 MB in your case. Okay, and then upload, save, and display. Let's try to check. Okay, so I have here now my course image. Okay, so you can also add your course image in your classroom and then just save and display. Okay, so here this is an example of a classroom with um, different courses and with different course image shown in the dashboard. Okay, so check. Let's try to check. We, are, uh, we already set up a virtual classroom and then created an e-learning course. And then we're going to manage our learners. Okay, let's try to check if you have created a class I mean, a course in your LMS. So if you successfully created your course, oops, I think I didn't save my um, this one. 
Okay, so if you're going to check your course, you go to Site Home and then you scroll down below here. Here's your available courses or course in your LMS. So if you're going to click this one, then you will be directed to your course page here. So by default, there's a four topics and announcement forum. Okay. So again, we're going to manage our learners. So there are different um, different roles as mentioned by Mam Seni a while ago. There is a role for us as an admin. You, there's a role as a teacher, and there's a role as a student. So since uh, we created our LMS, so by default, your role is administrator. Okay, so in managing your learner as an admin, you have to go to site administration and then users and here you can add a new user to your lms so like click add new user and then oh no wait 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 this is um the manual way of adding your user okay so we go to site and then okay here so in adding your um, users you can go to site administration and then uh, plugins and then go to authentication and manage authentication just click the manage authentication and then here you're going to set like if you want your um lms wait Okay, so if you want your LMS to have the button, say, create a new user, so you can check, uh, you can have this email uh, self-registration set to email base or enable this one, email base self-registration. And then check allow, log, I mean, log in via email. So you have to check this one. And then... also have to check i mean restrict domains when changing email and then save changes okay so by default when your account or your admin account is created there's only a login as guest in the login page so when you're going to set the uh, this the authentication um, it will appear the uh, the bottom create a new user will appear and the login page i mean the login guest will be um, disabled okay so just set that one plugins again go to plugins then authentication then manage authentication set the self registration into email based self registration allow login via email and save changes okay okay so please take note that this task here is not really intended uh, for you as a teacher so you just have this um, site admin because of uh, for the purposes of demonstration but then if your school already uh, will set up a server for you then um, you will only be uh, you will only be uh, your role will only be uh, as a uh, role as a teacher okay. okay 
Okay, so here. Okay, so guess um, there's on low, uh, there's also another way of adding uh, users in your account. So you just, just go to a user and then user and then um, upload users and then here so as a site administrator it uh, administrator it's very um uh tasky or tasky to um add to create um or to upload or to create uh, multiple accounts um for your teacher so here you can uh, you can upload your user at one time. So to be able to upload a user um, in just a uh, in one upload, so you just, you just create a file, a CSV file, which contains a data with the, uh, the uh, with the following data, which contains here uh, you have a. Uh, the username, the first name, last name, and the email address of your teacher so after creating this file just um, save in a csv format and then upload and there your uh, the accounts of your teachers will be created okay Okay, so okay. So I guess um, that's it for a quick demo on setting up a virtual classroom and creating an e-learning course and managing your um, learners. Oh, okay, wait, um, I forget something. Okay. okay, so we already created our course, for example, our first course. So how are we going to add our students? So you just go to your course and then participants and then enroll users and type the name or the username of your students. Okay, so okay, so I don't have a code to share, so I will end my discussion by just saying thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Mom Nenen, for the demonstration on how to build up the virtual classroom in Moodle. Um, there are comments here. Um, they had difficulty following because of their slow internet issue. Uh, but of okay. course, we cannot do something about it on their side. Um, and then there's a comment that too fast though si Ma'am Nenen. But uh, Ma'am Nenen was uh, doing her best to make it um, uh, mas makafollow. No? But later, uh, she will make adjustments on her pacing maybe sa afternoon niyang a demonstrations. No? A demonstration. Uh, but of course, there are comments also on uh, the LM the, the LMS website that you uh, demonstrated seems friendly and easy to use okay and one said um, we already use this in their they already use this in our class last sem in their class okay. uh, through mole m o l e it's a, it's another uh, platform Am I right, uh, Ma'am Nenen? Um, anyway, uh, uh, yes, Paul. Wale is actually the platform for MSUIIT. It's also a Moodle platform, but it's ah, okay. uh, it's just named Mole. Uh, Mole. Ah, okay. 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 Online learning uh, environment. So, but we can. There, there's there are questions. So if you don't mind, Ma'am Nenen, sorry. If you don't yes. mind, Ma'am Nenen, we I'll ask the questions for you. Uh, may I know the difference between a platform and LMS? That's from Mom Flora Bel Salga. 
um, uh, an LMS is just the same or it's, it's just a name for, or another term for um, the LMS or the platform. So say um, uh, MSUIIT is using the LMS under the Moodle platform. It's just things like that. Or say um, LaSalle University is using Sakai as their LMS platform. So it's just uh, something like that. Okay. Say so thank you, Ma'am Nen. Uh, another question okay. is how do we add graphics to your to the course page? Okay, so to add a graphics to the course page, page, I mean, so you just go to um go to the action or the gear icon. And then if you're going to click that, there's a drop down, then click on settings. And then scroll, just scroll down. And then you can see there is a course image. And then upload the file or the course image uh, you want to add to your classroom. Okay. So, and then save and display. Okay. So but don't they, forget you to need save to and have display. practice on that. Yes. Uh, navigating the interface. There. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a question also, Mom Nen, on. Um, Switching, uh, how to switch from admin to teacher role? Okay, so the, uh, switching from admin to teaching role. So if you're uh, in your LMS account, so by default, uh, your role is an administrator. But then if you're going to go to uh, your created classroom, so you can add yourself as a teacher so by default your classroom will have a don't have a student or say um, there is no participant in your classroom so you have to enroll yourself and then assign yourself as a teacher mm -hmm. so there so after um, assigning yourself as a teacher so you can perform your um, can perform or adding your um, adding resources can add resources to your classroom. Okay. Um, another question uh, is from Zhao Wei. Good morning, Mom. Nenen, what if we already have our own LMS in our school? Do we need to use Moodle? Um. Um. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't necessarily. You, you need to use a um, Moodle. It's just that um, it depends on uh, what your school requires you to use. Uh, what pl platform are you going to use to deliver your course? So there, you can choose whether uh, it's it's up to you if you're going to use Moodle. But then, if the school requires you to use your CS, uh, your LMS in your school, then that's how you're going to choose what pla uh, platform is best for you to deliver your course. Mm -hmm. and, and that also answers a question on who will pay the LMS or the platform. Oh, of course, yes. if the school decides to have one, I think it's very obvious it's the school. It's the school. Yes, it's the school. Another question, Mom Nenen, uh, directed to you. Is there really, I think this is more or less related to the previous question. Is there really a need to follow the LMS platform? What if the school can create a new way that is applicable in their own community? Is it okay to use the new one? Just asking for from Medina Foundation College in Misok. Yes, you can use uh, the yes, uh, you can use the platform that is indented for you to use in your school. So um, at this point, um, we are we are just sharing the platform that uh, we use in this training. So if what the school requires you to use, then you can use the platform um, requires, uh, requires the school. You to that, that would use. be uh, a decision for the school for the to school, make. Yes. yes. Okay. Um, maybe one, uh, two more questions from Michael Namuk. Can we use our Android cell phone uh, in LMS or do we really need a PC or laptop for this? Okay, um, Moodle has a app or a mobile application. 
so you can download the application but uh, to be able to to use the application you you have you need to have your own server so if you do not have that one you cannot enjoy of the Moodle uh, the Moodle I mean in the mobile so if the school has or set up a server or set up your um, server for your Moodle then maybe that's the time you can enjoy uh, using the Moodle apps mm -hmm. okay thank you for that mom man um, uh, last question from Louise Bazan is it okay although this will be answered in the, the tomorrow or the on Wednesday Thursday is it okay to use Google classroom instead um, in choosing what LMS um, that you're going to use it depends on how or what um, how the school or what the school requires you to use so you can use either um, Moodle or Google Classroom so both uh, LMS are good in delivering courses so it's up to you what LMS are you going to use in your class so I guess that's how <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Again, uh, that would depend on, the on the management, the school, yes. on uh, what platform to use and what LMS uh, to use. Uh, there's a comment there from Eliza Al Ashley. Yes, po, you can use your phones via browser ninyo to use Moodle. So I okay. think she has an experience on this already. And there is a comment here, Ma'am Nen. Uh, if there's a, an e-copy or file of the instructions you just uh, presented on how to create the Moodle classroom or how to manage classroom. Uh, yes, uh, after this, Chad will post the video of the presentation earlier, just like the previous uh, discussions in our, in the YouTube and in the LMS that we are yes. using. Mm -hmm. And of course, my view only from the Facebook page of Chad Region 10. And uh, Again, uh, I was wondering why there are still questions and how can they access the uh, LMS. Uh, so we have... Uh, yeah, actually, no, we have um, in our yes. LMS, we have around 700 um, users, uh, created users in our Reflex LMS. And in the mall, I mean, in the Reflex classroom, there's only 400 around 400 users who access our classroom. So meaning to say there are still users who haven't accessed or I mean, confirmed their I know, account. So maybe they can confirm the accounts now and start uh, joining or accessing our classroom. So yes, that they can yes, access it's our not, resources. Um, mm -mm. It's not yet uh, late. It's better yes. late than never. They can still access. Um, there is, um, uh, okay, uh, the, f the f URL or the link for the LMS will be flashed again uh, later at yes. the end of this uh, presentation of Mam Nenen. And then, um, okay, just a reminder for everyone because we are about to end the morning session. Uh, please register. Uh, the registration link is flashed now. And of course, the link, the URL for our LMS is flashed again. Uh, please register and access and make use of the uh, materials and resources there from our speakers. Our next schedule for our discussion on Moodle is this afternoon at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Another link registration uh, link will be provided. We will start at exactly 2 o'clock. Our speaker, a resource speaker, would still be Mom Nenen. She will continue on discussing and presenting to us how to build the virtual classroom in Moodle, this time customizing the teacher profile, setting up the structure of your subject or course, and how to add resources. So please be around this afternoon. I know some of you will be watching via TV or via social media, the sauna, but maybe we can 
uh, spare some time, no? Mag shift up from the discussion of Mam Nenen and the sauna. And anyway, later we will still watch it and the news, uh, late news. Okay, so that's uh, all for this morning. Thank you very much, Mam Ma Zeni and Mam Ma Nenen, Dr. Malabanan and Mam Ma Nenen Borinaga for your time for today. Uh, see you po uh, this afternoon. For all our participants, see you this afternoon. Uh, in behalf of CHED Region 10 and the Technical Working Group on Flexible Learning, thank you to our speakers for the time and the expertise. Uh, good morning once again. We learn as one. We educate as one. Stay healthy. Stay safe. See you this afternoon. Goodbye, thank everyone. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Salamat, Nenen. <laughs> <laughs>